Hi everyone, this is Richard. In this video, we're going to finally sum up everything we learned about futures and see if we can really just bring it together and understand absolutely everything there is to know about futures, okay? I think that's getting a little bit uh, over, uh, over ambitious, but let's at least try to get a more thorough understanding by going through this one more time and hopefully one last time. So I'm gonna create a program here. I did create a program where it simply types out short message, medium, and long. This is gonna be different from the previous one where you actually access the disk itself. We're not gonna have access these files. They're just gonna print simple string messages, okay? So in the fu first function, future string, it's a short wait, okay? Um, I made this completer, and I'm not exactly sure why I did, but I did. So a completer C and C complete. So the future message is short. Um, but I never actually used it in this function. So instead, return a new future delayed. So I don't think I've done this before. Um, a new future, and will it'll delay. It'll wait one second, and then it will have a callback, right? And the callback is right here. It's just going to go through a little bit of a loop, count to 10, and then return short, which is a string, but it's going to return as a future right here, okay? There's several ways of doing this. You could have also done return new future delayed, new duration. This is just the syntax, okay? And you could have had a second parameter being a anonymous function. So anonymous function does a callback, a, a function call, not a function reference or function callback. <clears throat> um, and that would have been the same thing as this. Do you remember me before asking, um, if you do have, if you don't have a parameter or an argument, argument, if you don't have an argument, would that actually still work? And the answer is yes. And this is evidence of that, right? So there's no argument, <clears throat> no argument is passed and it returns that value, okay? Next function, medium weight. We will return a future dot delayed and then return medium. So again, we're gonna give it two seconds. Notice the difference here. This has new duration, seconds, comma. So this is the second parameter, right? Here, it is, there is no optional parameter right here. Where am I? There's no optional parameter right here. I'm simply ending it and putting a dot right there, dot then. So new future dot delayed, dot then. So that's just another way of of returning the future itself, right? So callback, function call, dot then, because remember dot then, this is the future, dot then, not this one. This is just the string that's returning as a future, okay? And finally, we can do async, right? So async will return a future as well. And what we will do in this one itself we will use the completer much better. Completer dot new completer. Um, new future dot delayed, and this is going to await. So what's going to happen is, it's going to go through. It's simply going to wait on this until it's finished, and then it's going to proceed. C dot complete long. We could have put this up here also, and then we'll just turn C dot future. So those are the different ways to do pretty much the same exact thing, right? So what I'm going to do is future long a long wait, medium wait, and short wait. And then I'm going to convert them. Of course, I could have done the async await, but if I did that, it would be in the order of long, medium, and short. It would be printing that no matter what. This is not. All this is going to do is basically, as it comes by, it's going to print them in whatever order we have. And if we think about it, here is a wait. Remember, <clears throat> we're not busy doing stuff. So it's simply a waiting period. It's going to wait and while we're sitting around, as soon as I get the information, it's going to print the short. As soon as the information comes here, it's going to print this, uh, the medium and the long itself. All right? So let's go ahead and print, uh, run it and see what happens. Short, medium, long, after a little bit of a latency. This one, let's make no latency whatsoever. So that's the short wait. And let's see what happens. Short, medium, long. So the short one prints immediately. It doesn't, because there's no delay in and of itself, right? And um, that that's the importance. 
Now, what if we start doing something else, like the short callback? Remember we mentioned before the difference between waiting and being busy. Let's actually be busy. So this is actually busy doing something. So if I do this, what's going to happen? I'm not sure. Not much. Let's see, let's see this. Got it. Okay. So let's do this. I'm going to make it a little bit busy and let's watch the behavior here. Okay. We're waiting. We're wait Okay. We're waiting a little longer. Okay. So you notice that it printed all at the same time. What's going on here? Okay. So right here, future complete, it's going to go duration zero seconds. So it's, there's no, no more waiting going on. It goes straight to the callback, but as it's going to the callback itself, it's trying to make these calculations as it makes these calculations, it's just going on and on. So it is busy. So it's holding everybody up, but the time is still ticking, right? So we're activating this future activating this one, activating this one. Also, everything is being held up by this guy here, not because of, because there's no delay, right? Because there's no delay, it continues on. So it's not being held up because we're waiting. It's being held up because we're busy. So nothing actually happens, but these values can come back immediately because there's no more delay. The delay is finished. So as soon as this return value short, because the delay is over, these guys are just sitting, waiting in line, and they're giving the answer. So if I play it again, notice that there's a big, big, huge wait here. The other guys have already waited, so they're available right now, so they could print immediately. There's no longer a delay it's at the same time, see? And if, again, if I remove one zero, there's still a little delay, but it's not long enough, short, medium, there, it, it's, it's a little bit too quick. And therefore, there's still latency because the two seconds and the three seconds aren't up yet. So I hope that's clear. I hope that clarifies the difference between busy doing something and busy waiting around. All right. So if we change this around a little bit, let's see what happens. It's pretty much the same thing, right? How about if we add one more here? And then we'll start moving this around. I wish there was something in between. Uh, short, medium, long, again. How about right here? Actually, I'm going to remove this and put a 5 here instead. Let's try that. It should be half the speed, but okay. So it, it does the same exact thing because really the hold up, the busy part is doing this nonsense counting itself. Whereas the, which is different from the latency, the waiting that we have different ways of doing the waiting, right? Callback. That was a great example here, right here itself. Then there's a callback function, an anonymous function. Uh, that's a function call, excuse me. And then we have the. Um, just the dot then, and then we have the await. And we could have done any and all of those right inside of here, depending on what we want. But again, if we had it right here one last time, sorry to repeat myself. If we did it here and then we put the awaits await right here, remember the behavior would be different. It would always be in the, in the order in which I listed it if I did that, but that's not what I wanted. I wanted to basically, it prints short, medium, and long. I wanted it more in a asynchronous type of fashion. Okay. So I hope that clarifies the concepts, the differences between futures, parallel working, um, how different ways to both access the future as well as different ways to um, create the future. Thank you.